Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Monday. What the fuck do I usually say? I fucked up the cadence there. What's going on? It's Bill Burr. It's time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday. That's it. Thursday afternoon, just before Friday. Monday morning podcast, and I am in a fucking hotel room. Echo, echo, with the loudest fucking air conditioner I've ever heard in my life. And I'm not shutting it off. What do they got set to? 72. That's nice. I can live with that. I love when you go into these fucking hotel rooms and they got it like set at 68, just cranking. There's nobody in there. You'd think these corporate cunts, right? How they try to squeeze every fucking dollar out of you. And nobody ever figures out that it's the corporate cunts. They never do. They, they, they blame everything but the corporate cunts. You know? I saw this clip the other day. Like, they, they only, all they do is they, if they got a name, that's what the fuck they hang it on. I saw this thing where this actor was talking about, like, the difference between making movies now and making movies, like, 20 years ago where you had, like, the DVDs and all of that shit. And so if you're looking to make a movie for this amount of money, you, you know, it's not like the old days where you could also depend on the DVD sales and blah, 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 and all that. And everybody's like, easy solution. Pay the actors less. <laughs> uh, I love how dumb people, they just, life is so easy for dumb people. They just, they fucking, they, everything, why don't you just fucking do this? Bing, bing, bing boom. And they throw their hands up like, how fucking hard was that? Like, I figured it all out. I figured it all out. I'll tell you what I figured out is that fucking air conditioner is going to be too goddamn loud for this, uh, for the podcast. Off. Oh, I, you know something? I like a fucking air conditioner that shuts right off. They usually they go, you know, you shut them off and they're like, it's like sending your kid to bed. Go to bed. You know, it's like a 20 minute pro- process. Um... Yeah, it's 72 degrees. I like that. Usually you walk in, they have it at 68, 66, south of the Mason-Dixon line where a government ain't telling me how fucking chilly I can be, right? Why, why would you bring up the Civil War, Bill? Why would you do that? All right. I would say, though, like, you know what shape people are in by what, what they have the air conditioner set at at the hotel. You know, 72 degrees. I'm in Lincoln, California. Um, Lincoln, Lincoln, California. Home of this fucking casino I'm performing at is just north of Sacramento, a.k.a. Sacktown, a.k.a. Hella something or other, whatever the fuck they say up here. It's at 72 degrees, so I'm expecting people to be in decent shape. Right. If you go into a hotel room and the air conditioner is set at 68, 66, I mean, 66, that's for special places like Houston, you know, where people are so fat and it gets so fucking hot that like, you know, people just die. Like right now, there's just people dying in the streets. Houston, Texas is 105 fucking degrees out. I got a buddy, Verzi's down there working, right? Who, by the way, is just getting standing ovations all around the fucking country, everywhere he performs at. That fucking guy is, uh, is on a whole other level. And I knew he was going to go to a whole other level like a couple years before the big pandemic there. Um, I saw him at Gotham when he had to stretch. And, you know, he'd been opening for me, but I only get to see him do 10, 15. I saw him do a half hour, and I was just like, all right, this, this is over. This guy's going to fucking... That's going to be rocket fuel right there. So anyway, yeah, it's 105 degrees in fucking Texas. Down there in Houston, man. Jesus Christ. You know, California gets like that where I live in Los Angeles for like fucking every year. It's like a little bit longer. Used to be like two, three days. Now it's like 10 days, 10 days. And uh, it's fucking nuts. Like nobody's dealing, you know, everybody's like, this fucking global warming shit's getting a little scary, right? No solutions. We will figure it out. That, that's what you say when you have kids. They, they, they're going to figure it out. They, they, you know, they're going to figure something out. I don't know if they're going to figure it out. I don't know. I have no idea. 
But all I know now is the move that people do. Now there's like, so everybody like fries for like two weeks out in LA and you're like, oh my God, you know, like, is this the end of the world? You know, it's like that level hot, just non fucking, like you wake up at like (laughs) fucking seven in the morning if you got kids. Or well, if you have a real job, right? You get up that early and it's already like too hot to go outside. You're like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. So now the new move for the limousine liberals out there is they just leave. You know, like how when I lived in Manhattan, the super rich, it was amazing. Like the summertime, it would get so fucking hot. Uh, Oh, down on the subway platforms. Like, I still remember there was this time I was doing this gig either up in the Bronx or out in Brooklyn or whatever, and I had to go, I had to take the B or the D, and it was underneath the A and C line, so I had to go two levels down in the subway in, like, on, like, July 31st, and it was one of the safest places in New York because it was too hot to do anything other than just fucking stand there. Like... If you were like a crazy homeless person, if you started having like a manic episode, like you literally would would have just fucking died swinging your arms around. Everyone, like you ever go, I, I, you ever have an apartment that's actually an attic, the top of a house and there's no air conditioning? I lived in one of those one time. And I remember in the morning, the fucking house flies would be the size of your eyeballs and they would be <laughs> all over and you couldn't fucking kill them. You'd have like a dish rag, you know, because... You know, you didn't have a fly swatter because that was extra fucking money and you lived in the top of a fucking house. You know, one of those uh, murder she wrote houses that just the heat just sits up there. My friends used to call the apartment the triangle and there was two levels to it. When you first walked in, you had to walk right down the center or else your head would hit either side on the ceiling. And then it opened up to a a bigger, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck it was. Like, whatever, like eight foot triangle as opposed to the other one was like a a five foot or six foot fucking triangle. Anyway, in the morning, the flies would be fucking, you couldn't get them. And then me and my brother would go to work uh, and we would just shut the door and all the fucking windows and these things would just bake in there all day long. And... By the time you got home, eight hours later, nine hours later with the lunch hour, the fucking flies, you could literally pick them out of the air. Just walk up to them and just just flick them across the fucking room. (laughs) I ever tell you this story? So we didn't have any air conditioning. So my move was in the six foot part of the triangle, because it was an attic, you know, in attics in those old houses, like the window was at floor level. So I used to sleep in a sleeping bag I had no furniture. Oh, my God. I owned nothing. I had an old pickup truck, a Ford fucking Ranger. My life was so simple. And I just had my jeans in a pile, my shirts in a pile, and my socks and underwears. Not even any containers, just sitting there. And then I had this orange sleeping bag. (laughs) And I used to sleep in that thing right next to the fucking window. And it was so frustrating I didn't understand cross ventilation. I didn't understand air pressure. What we should have done was on both ends open the, maybe you couldn't on the front to get the fucking cooler air from the outside to push that hot air out, right? Or a window fan, something to get it circulating. We would just fucking be sitting in there. I remember I would go to sleep and I would just, I laid on top of the fucking sleeping bag because it was so fucking hot. And I would just be like pressed up against the fucking screen. (laughs) And every once in a while, there'd be a breeze and I'd be like, oh. (laughs) And then I'd fucking pass out. And somewhere around three in the morning, you'd wake up like shivering because the fucking cold air finally came in. And then I would just get in the sleeping bag. And then that was it. And uh, so one night I'm sleeping on top of the fucking sleeping bag and I finally go to sleep and I'm just in there in my fucking tidy whiteies because it was the 80s. This is before boxers came in. So I'm laying there 
my whole body the cover, color of my tidy whities The only pigment is the one red line that went around the band of my tidy whities So I fall asleep. And when I was sleep, I all of a sudden, I don't know, I was having this fucked up dream about swimming or something. I woke up and there was like this fucking monsoon going on. And you know when it's raining so hard with the wind, it's blowing sideways? I was absolutely fucking drenched and I was shivering. I had to fucking get up. I went in the bathroom and I just had this old, awful fucking scratchy towel, dried myself off. And the next morning... Yeah, because I couldn't sleep in the sleeping bag because it was soaking wet. I kind of slept over by my fucking clothes. Just grabbed like a pile of shirts for a fucking pillow. Because <laughs> my pillow was all soaked. And the next morning, I woke up and it was already 90 degrees out and I had a fucking cold. It was the fucking worst. And I came to work like, oh, it's good, I'm sleeping by the fucking window, right? And I've had to unload trucks. Ah. Oh. You know what's funny about a summer cold, though? I got over it really quickly. It wasn't like the winter ones that just hang around for like the whole week. It was kind of over. It was like a 48-hour cold or whatever. But anyway, why am I talking about this shit? Um, oh, because I was near somebody that, had, that fucking got COVID. So I feel fine. I'm testing negative, but I got on the plane. I wore a mask and everything. I miss wearing the mask. I like the mask. The mask with the fucking hat on. Nobody talking to you. Very antisocial. You know? Slash you're a little, you feel a little mysterious. Like, ooh, who is that? Does he know something that I don't? Um, anyway, so that's my life. So now I'm in this fucking hotel room over the next couple of days. And uh, I'm going to do some shows up here in Sacramento. I'm very excited about this. Uh, I got the new hour is cranking. And I also went out and I got some new cymbals for my drum kit. You know, I've always played like Zildjian A's or like Sa whatever Sabian's version of that is. I always played brighter cymbals. And I've just been hearing more dark sounds in my head. Um, not like depressive, just the stuff I've been listening to. I don't know what. So, um, I'm going to, uh, anyways, I, I bought, it was funny. I thought I bought a ride and I bought a, a I didn't buy it. The guy fucking hooked me up. What am I talking about? I got hooked up through Dave Elich and, um, I ended up getting two rides. I didn't get a crash, but they're both so like, you know, you can crash on them. So they're not bad, but I might go back and get another one. Um, but anyway, new hi-hats, the whole thing. But I got the clear heads, so my toms are really deep and they're kind of not matching with the cymbals I got. So when I get back, I'm gonna go over to Pro Drum on Vine, the best drum shop out there, if not in the country. And I'm gonna get some uh, coated heads, put them on there, crank them up. And uh, I don't know, just fucking, I like doing that bebop style drumming. I don't know what the fuck it is. I've always approached it and getting close, get a little more independence, and then I just get distracted with other shit, and now it's like, nah, I'm gonna fucking do that. And in fact, I actually brought the book out on the road with me. My favorite, one of my favorite drum books of all time. Let's see if I got this in here. Unzip in the bag. My wife bought me a new fucking bag, a new uh, backpack for years. She's been telling me, I think you need a new backpack. And I'm like, why? This one's fine. And it was an Adidas one, and the A fell off. And it said, I does, or whatever the fuck. And it just got all the way down. All I had left was the D. And she just got sick of looking at it. So for my birthday, she bought me a new backpack, you know, acting like she was doing something for me. But she was really doing it for herself because she was sick of looking at it. Oh, The Art of Bop Drumming by John Riley. Not John C. Riley, who's an amazing musician himself and actor and anything else he seems he that he puts his mind to. It's John Riley. And forever I've been on uh, comp example four. And, you know, it's, it says compact disc 12 and compact disc 13. And I finally got to the point where I can play these things and kind of hear them in my head. And now there's like on these other pages, there's sort of like these two bar phrases and some soloing ideas you know, swinging 16th and triplets and shit. And um, 
I don't know what it is about jazz drumming. For some reason, like I, I actually think about what I'm playing and ideas go into my head. And because like, I just feel like playing rock drums is like your whole body. Like constantly, like you're playing a groove and it's, you know, snare, kick, hat, snare, kick, ride, whatever the fuck you're doing. It's kind of, you know, and your left foot's like tapping on the hi-hat. I just kind of feel like your body's already preoccupied. And, uh, but with jazz, you know, with the yaz, as Fred Armisen would do, right? It's just on the cymbal. So you just kind of have that. And then you can kind of comment with the drums between the hands and the feet. And you start hearing shit. And what I like too is when you play along with the jazz record, it's, it's not like, you know, when I play along to with like Joey Kramer or John Bonham or stuff where I'm really listening. What are they playing? And then I just try to just do what they do. Like, because there's so much improv going on with jazz drumming that like there's no real way to just do a cover like you wouldn't just fucking play exactly what they but it would take you forever because you know they're just doing whatever egg, egg in the horn play around or whatever and it's just like oh, all right and, and I, for the first time ever it's kind of opened my brain up to actually kind of listen to what the hell i'm playing so um that's what i'm going to be doing this summer i have no other f- things to do other than just do my stand-up, hang out with my kids, and uh, try out these new cymbals. So I'm, I'm excited about that. But I also, you know, I'm rehabbing my shoulder and doing whatnot. Um, my son was so freaking cute when I went to leave. He does this thing. He goes, Dada, where are you going? Ugh, breaks my heart every time. And then he goes to take my hand and try to pull me back into the house. Or he tries to take my hat off. Because he knows when I put my hat on, it means I'm going outside. Because I'm a little bald there. Don't want to get the old age spots on the head there, right? So, um, yeah. It was funny. He actually, before I left, gave me one of, you know, the hug you always want as a parent. Because usually they come up and they give you a hug. And the second they hug you... And you're sinking into, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing ever. I love this kid so much. This second, I mean, like, literally 0.3 seconds into the hug, they turn around, they point to something else they want to do. They just won't hang in there for the hug. But he knew that I was leaving. So he was hugging me and wasn't letting me go. So, But I was leaving, so it was sad. Kind of sucked. But I did get the hug out of it. Um, my daughter's hilarious, though, now. I'm like, yeah, I got to go do a couple road gigs. She's like, all right, see ya. (laughs) Don't let the door hit you in the backside. I'll see you later. Um, So anyway, old Billy fucking, uh, little Billy Botox is going to try to go down to the gym, hit the elliptical, do a little this, a little fucking that. Um, over the next couple days at this casino, I am out, I am out here in this, st- it's not really the sticks, I just don't have a fucking car, so we'll see, uh, we'll see what's gonna happen, though, but I'm working with, uh, Dean Del Rey and the mighty, the mighty Joe Bartnick, who, by the way, I gotta tell you guys something, he has a fucking stand-up special, we'll start all things comedy, he did it last year, Ben Tischler directed it, and, um, I knew it the night when I saw him do it. I'm like, this special is actually special. And he fucking killed so hard in the first one that he came out on the second one and killed even harder. And that's the one that they used. And uh, we're starting to release some clips towards the end of the summer. The whole special's coming out. I'm going to have Joe on my podcast. You got to go see this guy fucking live. I was joking with him. I was thinking about how to sell his stand-up special. And I joked with him today at the airport. I was like, if you, watch, if you watch the NHL for the fights, uh, you're going to like this stand-up special. <laughs> um, gloves off Joe Bartnick, as he's always done. Well, it just, the first time I ever saw Joe do stand-up, Molly from the Punchline in San Francisco. Joe was living in San Francisco. And uh, I was in the green room, and she goes, you know, she'd always pick comedians she would had this knack of putting the right people to open with the right comics coming into town where you know the opening act complimented the headliners act but nobody was stepping on anybody's toes so she knocked on the door she goes 
uh, you know, this guy, Joe, I want you to see him. Come here, just, just watch some of his acts, tell me what you think. And within two jokes, I was like, oh my God, I love this guy. And he was completely unapologetic and just absolutely destroyed. So all these years later to do a special with him, I'm so fucking excited about this thing. Um, we have one of the clips up right now on All Things Comedy, him talking about that bar rescue guy. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's... And the special and the way Joe looks, it's like, is this from a long time ago? Did this just come? It's like all at the same time. It's like right now and a throwback all in the best way. So definitely uh, check that out. And then we got another special out, um, which we're releasing clips for. It was Nate Craig, another completely different style, but absolutely, Nate is an absolutely brilliant comedian. And um, I always get all kinds of messages whenever he works on one of my shows. It's always like, hey, good job. Who the hell was that first guy? Yada, yada, yada. So uh, having him coming out. So we're going to be promoting that over the summertime. So if you guys can check them out, look for the clips, and then eventually we'll put out the whole special because that's the way the kids like to consume it now. They like the clips, so uh, we ain't going to fight it. That's how we're going to do it there. Um. Oh, my God. I saw another car that I swear to God I would buy in a fucking second. That I would buy in a fucking second. I posted it on my Instagram. I think it's still up on my stories. You got to check it out if you came up in the 80s. It's a 1986 Oldsmobile Cutlass 442 with the fucking T-tops and those factory mag wheels that it had and the cloth interior. I cannot even fucking tell you how much I loved that car when I was a kid. What I really loved was the guy that drove it. The guy that drove it was everything that I wanted to be. You know, he had a mullet. He could get a tan. He wore tank tops. He was fucking yoked. He probably dealed weed. And then he had some smoking peroxide blonde in the passenger seat. You know, just getting blown, driving down to the Cape. (laughs) And I'm going to tell you right now, if you missed it, you missed it. And as far as I know, we all wanted to be that guy. There were three, there was basically, there was two camps. This is some white guy shit. This is some inside white guy shit here. All right. There was two camps. There was the fucking... You either wanted a Camaro Z28 or the fucking Trans Am. Now, personally speaking, I thought the Trans Am was better. I thought the Z28, everybody had that car. But a select few had the Trans Am. And even though it was the same body, same GM, I thought the Pontiac was better. Um, so you, th- there was that camp as far as sports cars went. And then on the other side, if you were a little more like, you like to cruise around town, you know what I mean? I, I, I don't know, like, you weren't necessarily racing, but you wanted like a badass car, but you also, you know, wanted to take some chick out to the ground round, you know, so for some fine dining with wood shavings on the ground. You either had the Oldsmobile Cutlass and if you had the 442, you were a fucking legend. Which I always forget what that meant. It was like a four barrel, something else, dual exhaust. Was it four speed? Four barrel, four speed, dual exhaust, something like that. I, have, I don't remember. And it, okay, so there was the Oldsmobile Cutlass, the Buick Regal, or the Monte Carlo. And Monte Carlo, Chevy just dominated. Chevy fucking dominated. So everybody wanted a Monte. Dude, he's got a Monte. You know? And this is before the, the, the Monte Carlo SS came out. They brought that back, I want to say, in like 85. But like, you know, if you had like an 82 or an 83 or an 81 Monte Carlo, you know, they had them black with like the red seats. And they started putting T-tops in them. And the Buick Regal, they always kept that one, you know, That was always a little more refined. That was actually for an actual adult as opposed to somebody, you know. I mean, dude, that was just totally the gold's gym. You know, maybe you did a cycle or maybe you are that natural. I don't know. You know, 
you had the fucking tank top with like it just it was open all the all the way down to like your fucking waist. The big puffy pants. <laughs> it was fuck. I used you know when you had the fucking macho man Randy Savage. Fucking, I'm painting a picture here, people. Macho man Randy Savage glasses. He had the mullet down the back with the flat top on top. I mean, like, you were just crushing it on, on, on like, an insane fucking level. Always had some a 12-pack or a fucking joint behind your ear. And, uh, you know, just driving down the fucking street, listening to the outfield. <laughs> You know, tears for fears because your girlfriend wanted to listen to it. It was just incredible, right? So anyways, here it is 40 years later, almost. And uh, I, I, somebody posted this fucking Oldsmobile 442. It immediately sold. And uh, the thing about, like, two of the cars that I love the most in the 80s is uh, later generations loved them too. And, like... I love the uh, the Chevy Caprice Classic, four door sedan, but uh, Latino community loves that car, and a lot of them, the ones that have survived, they're turned into lowriders. So it's kind of hard to find like a stock one. Um, they look sick as a lowrider. Like I, I um, I'm a huge fan of like the the fucking you know those lace tops, like the painting of the cars with lowriders is just like on a whole other fucking level. Um, but I like the stock looking one. And then the, uh, the cars I was talking about, the Oldsmobiles, the Buick Regals, the fucking Monte Carlos, those are the ones like the black dudes down in Atlanta with, they put the giant fucking tires on them or whatever. So it's kind of hard to find like a stock one because everybody likes doing that to those, both of those cars. But uh, this was a stock Oldsmobile 442. I have it in my, my stories. Um, oh my God. I wonder if I could just rent one. That's my new thing. Cause I look up my, I'm like, oh fuck. I should just sell my daily driver and get that thing. But then you have that thing and then you're just like, fuck, you know, now I got to get it fixed. It's leaking. I got to deal with all of this shit. Right. Um, the lovely Neo really changed my mind about that where, you know, there's two types of people. There's, there's the people that fucking buy them. Um, and, and then there's two types of buyers, me, where I buy one, like I could never get rid of my old truck. I just love it too much. Right. But I, I get like emotionally attached to shit. So I always envied Dean Del Rey where he could get something, drive it. It was cool. And then he'd get rid of it and then get something else. You know, I always thought that that was fucking cool, but I just, I was getting them and I just like, nah, man, I fucking love this car. I want to keep it. And then I get, I love it so much. I get worried that I'm going to sell it to the next person. They're going to fuck it up or they're not going to care about it. Um, but that is definitely, you know, oh, I forgot to say with the Buick Regal. So that was like for more like a fucking, you know, an adult would kind of drive that car. And then out of nowhere, I think when the Monte Carlo SS, when they brought back that line, uh, the Buick Regal shut everybody down with the Grand National and, uh, that car was so fast for that era. It wasn't really fast, especially for now. Like, you know, what's funny right now is, is like the cars are so goddamn fast. The gas combustion ones, forget about the fucking electric ones. Those things are insane. There's like more horsepower than brains out there. So there's just people fucking. <laughs> I mean, you could just watch endless videos of people fucking up their car because they lose the rear end. But most of them are, I think nowadays, a front wheel drive, so you're kind of all right with that. But like, um, the fucking speed of some of these cars that are coming out, it's really a fucking glorious time. So I will say, you know, if we are gonna heat up the planet, we are kind of doing it in the, in, the, in the best way possible. Um, so anyway, I don't know. That's a, I hope you guys enjoyed me going down fucking memory lane. Uh, I forget what those things were called. What body type that body type that was? I remember the uh, there was a certain body type too for the Camaros and the Trans Ams. The F type. I don't know what the fuck it was, but I am now 
no, I'm going to go to the gym. But after I do that before my show, I'm going to go on the internet and I'm just going to look up fucking mid-80s Oldsmobile Cutlass 442s. <laughs> and if you're young listening to this, you're going to do the same thing, God willing. If you live long enough, all this shit that you have now, you're going to go back and just look up. Like, like I don't know what you guys will look up, old laptops and PlayStations and iPads. And it's going to mean something to you because it's going to be a part of your life where you weren't married, you didn't have any kids, no responsibility, no ailment, no debt, none of that shit. And uh, so it'll, it'll just rem- it'll remind you of a simpler time, almost like a, a, a comfort food. And then also, I got to give a... Uh, I got to uh, give a shout out to this comedian I saw. He did this fucking amazing bit. Um, look up at Pat... Bircher, B-U-R-T-S-C-H-E-R. It says, at Pat Bircher, uh, Bircher uh, solve the economic problem. Uh, this bit fucking killed me. It absolutely fucking killed me. Um, and his style is amazing. So definitely check him out. All right, that's it. I hope you guys are all good. Have a great weekend, you cunts. And uh, enjoy the music that the amazingly talented Andrew Themelis uh, is put in here. So don't ever give me credit. It's always Andrew with the great music. And, um, and then enjoy uh, a bonus episode of the Thursday afternoon just before Friday, Monday morning podcast at right here. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr and it's the Monday morning podcast for Monday, June 28th, uh, 2015. How you doing? How are you? How are you? How are you? How are fucking you? Um, I am completely burnt out. I'm at the end of my tour right now, and uh, I have to leave for my show in Tucson in exactly one hour. So I'm going to do a half hour of this podcast and then do my show, and then I'm going to finish it up after the show. So what you're basically going to have is stone sober me doing the first 30 minutes and then a slightly more, a slightly older, slightly wiser, slightly more buzzed um, Billy Redface doing the second half of the podcast because that's how this is going down and I, I have to be somewhere immediately of course the second I fucking land because that's how it works um, in this business that's how it works that's how, why they, oh, oh you, you're going to have a little breather there you're going to have a breather let's just fucking yank that right off the table but it could always be worse I could have absolutely nothing to do staring at a phone like that crazy bitch in that movie the audition you guys ever see that? Remember that? She was sticking the needles in that fucker. That's what you get for trying to bang some crazy actress. You know, they're not sticking needles into you literally, right? Listen to me, having the nerve to act like I'm even, I'm even remotely sane. Um, so anyways, uh, this is the last night of the tour. I want to thank everybody that's come out on this one. And I want to thank Joe Bartnick for absolutely crushing it. Right up until uh, Wednesday, Bakersfield, the last one. And then fucking uh, Jay Lawhead came in after fucking Bartnick gave me a strong seven innings. I went to the bullpen, you know. He gave me six and two thirds. Then he walked the next batter. Then I brought in fucking brought in Lawhead. Lawhead crushed it. And um, it was a crazy week of shows. Then we did uh, did someplace in the Inland Empire. And uh 98% of the people were cool there. And then there was just some of the drunkest fucking animals I've ever been, uh, that I've been in front of in a while. I'm talking like literally screaming and whistling during setups. Like I wasn't even saying anything. And I'd just be like, well, you know, I've been doing stand up for a while. And something in the back of me like, just fucking whistling <laughs> about what? I don't know. I felt like I was doing like a rock concert. You know, like when you listen to a live album and they'll end the song. And one of those mumbling jackass singer-songwriters would be like, you know, we've been coming out here for a while. And he'll go, yeah! Woo! It's like, dude, he hasn't said anything. He's, he's on his way to the point, and people are already screaming because they're fucking wasted. So my apologies to the sober people who are at that show. That show was fucking brutal. I'll be honest with you, man. That one was a lot of work with all those screaming. And it was like 20 people, and they were in all different parts 
of the uh, the venue, and they were screaming and yelling. And I finally snapped in the end. And uh, I don't know. And I said a word I shouldn't have said. You know what I mean? And then something in the crowd like related to it, and then they came up to me and they fucking gave me the tickets back. I'm like, who oh, you spent all this money on? And just and then through through the whole fucking tragedy of their life, put it on me. I didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. You know, and it's just one of those fucking things. Once again, it's like, dude, I talked about plane crashes. I talked about sinking cruise ships. I made fun of Bruce Jenner. So I guess I, uh, gender, Bruce Jenner. So I, Nia just laughed at me. So, I mean, technically it wasn't all of that offensive. No, it was just the fucking thing that, that, that was, that was about your fucking life. And not only that, I just said a word. I didn't even do a bit on it. I basically said to the guy in the crowd, I said, the, the, the guy was such a fucking moron. I, after 90 minutes of this guy, I finally snapped. I was like, dude, are you fucking retarded. I never say that word. And that night, I happened to say it in a moment of fucking night. Now, obviously, I'm not making fun of fucking uh, uh, um, whatever the fuck you're supposed to say, mentally challenged people. Why would I ever do that? And I've said in the past I didn't. So these fucking people come up to me, you said in the past you don't do that. And they fucking show me a picture of that kid and just put the whole fucking thing on me. And I want to apologize to the next 40 people in line because I was processing what the fuck just happened. And then I got livid. The way they fucking handed me the tickets back and I took them because I didn't know what they were saying. Like, here, throw these things out. You're a piece of shit. And, you know, it's like I've, it's like if they're listening, 100 percent, I apologize and 100 percent go fuck yourself. Let me guess. Let me guess. You never said anything fucked up, right? You never laughed at something you shouldn't have said. You never lost your temper and fucking said something. If you dump your whole fucking life on me like that, like I'm the worst fucking person ever, you know, I, you are out of line. And not only that, once I realized what the fuck you were talking about, I said, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. That guy was yelling. I shouldn't have said it, blah, blah. And you just wouldn't accept it. You wouldn't fucking accept it. You had to have your moment. So, you know, my apologies and fuck you. So that was that night. <laughs> Anyways, you know what I mean? I mean, dude, some fucked up shit happened to me when I was a kid that I will not get into. But I've seen comics joke about it. I don't give a fuck. I know they're not attacking me. I know they don't, they don't wish that misery on me. Jesus, fuck, I'm on a comedy show, right? Jesus Christ, every fucking week you guys call me a ginger 12 ways to Sunday. I don't give a fuck. Do I think you really hate me? If you hated me, you wouldn't be writing in. I get it. You're fucking around. Ugh, sorry, I had to get that out. It was something I wasn't going to talk about, but if I didn't talk about it, it'd be fucking flicking me in the back of my ear for the rest of this podcast. So anyways, oh my God. I was literally going like, you know what? I'm never going out after a fucking show again. That's how fucking awful that whole goddamn moment was. All right. I probably sh- I, This is why I probably shouldn't have talked about that because now I'm fucking, I don't know. I wish I didn't say it. Why the fuck did they have to come that night? You know, what are the fucking odds? Why did that drunk have to be there? You know, if I just ended the show five minutes before, I wouldn't have said, the, the, uh, it's just fucking it kills you. You know, people, just, every, everybody's got a fucking moment now. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, I'm fucking driving through this country, right? And you're just seeing all the water out in California. It is at, at brutally low levels. And, you know, <laughs> Old Tony Monsanto there, whatever the fuck you say. Tony's fucking with the food. None of these cunts running for president are going to talk about any of that. It's all going to be like the level with which people are freaking out that gay people can now get, get married. Who gives a fuck? Who aren't like, I don't understand people trying to protect, you know, what do they call it? The sanctity of marriage or whatever these fucking morons are talking about. It's like, dude, I don't know if you've noticed, like 60% of them go down the shitter anyways. You know what I mean? Maybe these gay people will be better at it than straight people and they'll, they'll up the numbers, right? Oh, those poor bastards. Gay people, God bless you. But I, I don't think that you realize what you fucking walked into. <laughs> we want to do it too. Jesus Christ. You know what being married's like? Being married is like going on a ride at Six Flags. You know what I mean? It's fun. It's fucking exciting. But there's like a there's this fucking chance that one of the bolts is going to come off and you're going to go flying into the woods. Have I ever told you guys about that? I don't go to I don't go to amusement parks. I absolutely refuse. You know, maybe you know Disneyland. I would go to. I've gone to that. But even then, you go in Space Mountain, you're like, how fucking old is this ride? 
You know what I mean? Just there's always something going on. But, you know, I feel like the stationary ones are safer because you know where they're at. Those ones where they pick it up and put it down and then leave town. You know, you're still fl- you flew into the bushes and they go, all right, let's wrap it up. <laughs> and they get the fuck out of there. Um, plus the wear and tear of putting them together and taking them down and everything. Ah, oh, man, why the fuck did that happen? So that fucking just. It was a, well, that's the worst moment I've had as a comedian in a long fucking time. Because I, I, I felt I really hurt those people. and I didn't want to do that. But then to, to the way they fucking, you know, uh, just right in my, just the whole fucking thing. And then it wasn't until I, I just wish in the moment I could have said that. So like plane crashes are okay. You're all right with that. Cruise ships, you're okay. Cruise ships sinking, that's fine. You know what I mean? Me teasing fucking Caitlyn Jenner, that's fine. That's not that. All of that's funny, right? Oh, I wish I had a, I wish I had a fucking videotape of them sitting in the crowd laughing at all of that shit. And that fucking moron. That's what I should have called them. That was the thing. I wasn't even thinking about, like, you know, mentally challenged kids when I said that. I was basically just saying, are you, why are you being such a fucking cunt? Right? And then some feminist will come up to me. Um, I have one of those and it's called a vagina. And fucking sticks the goddamn tickets back in my face. Sorry and lighten the fuck up. How about that? How about that? If you're going to go to a comedy show, if not, you know, stay the fuck home. Go watch Lifetime. Um, anyways, I'm going to keep going back to that. I don't give a shit until I get it out of my fucking system. So, oh, Billy Cardio went off the rails the last two days. Um, I stayed out late. Um, you know, some people that I work with uh, showed up when I was in Vegas, surprised me. They're like, ah, oh, let's go out and get a cigar. So I was like, all right. So we went out and uh, stayed out till like five in the morning. And in the meantime, my uh, my my iPhone 4S finally shit the bed. You know, Bartnick was he had the 4S and he finally switched to the six. He was saying he goes, dude, once that battery starts cutting out, you know, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And it finally fucking cut out. And I plugged it in, and I was getting nothing. So, you know, the lovely Nia is like, well, we got to get you a new phone. So. Uh, I went into Caesars, Caesars Palace next door, where uh, they have all these beautiful shops and everything, and all these fucking animals walking in and out of them, like me, you know, shuffling around in fucking sweatpants. Saw some guy in there with like true religion pants and a t shirt. <laughs> Did not see any Ed Hardy shirts. Ed Hardy shirts are gone. I don't know what ocean they're floating in right now i'm guessing the indian ocean for some fucking reason we can't dump it all in the pacific right i don't know where those fucking things are um but i guarantee you when they do the uh the fast times at ridgemont high or some shit or the dazed and confused of this era they're gonna have people wearing those true religion jeans or maybe last decade i should say and the ed hardy shirts i'm telling you dude that's why george carlin another reason why george carlin was a genius you know, is if you notice most of his specials, he wore just all black. I mean, that's never going out of fucking style. You know, he probably figured that out after he had his hippy dippy shit that he wore in the 70s. You know what I mean? Some of that stuff. And you start looking at it like, oh, my God, do I got flowers on my jeans? <laughs> Why did I think that was cool? Because everybody else did. But they got rid of theirs. And there's videotape of you with yours on. So you look like the only asshole that wore them, you know? So, um Anyways, uh, I'm all over the fucking map here. So, uh, dude, Bakersfield was tremendous. Um, trying to work my way back to think where the hell we were. Oh, I already talked about I keep forgetting that I do the Thursday podcast, so you already heard about that. Um, playing the Fox Theater and all of that, and obviously Fresno. Fresno, California, we ain't fucking around. You come up here, if you smile, we're going to bust a cap in your head. Um, did that one, and uh, then we did two nights at the Mirage. And uh, just had a fucking amazing time and um, tremendous crowds. And uh, so tonight's the last one down here in Tucson, Arizona. And it was like a seven-hour drive down here. We got up at like uh, 9 a.m. or something like that, drove all the way down here. And I got to get – we got to drive over to the venue here at like 6.45. So I'm going to try to get through as much. Maybe I'll do 45 minutes. Who knows? The last 15. You guys are all like, Bill, cut it off now. Get shit-faced and then do the rest of the podcast. Um, so anyways, uh, oh, here's something. You know what's a fucking pet peeve of mine and fucking, uh, I don't know if this is just a 
about women or if it's casino women. I have no idea. But women who, uh, at the end of the night, take off their high heels because their feet hurt, and they just start walking down the street in their bare feet or walking across the casino rug in their bare feet, you know, bottom of their feet all fucking dirty. I was joking about that at the Mirage. I was like, you know what? You can't, you can't marry that. You can't marry that. Dude, that's a quitter. You know, you, you, you couldn't make it till the last fucking 1,500 yards up to your room. You couldn't throw a pair of little flippy flops into your clutch or something like that. What kind of a fucking animal? You know, I could only imagine. I know what women think. Well, if you had to walk around in those, yeah, you know, I'd have some flip flops. I would. There's no fucking way I would ever walk barefoot across the rug. People walk in and out of the fucking men's and ladies room with God knows, you know what the fuck goes on in there. Literally a shit show, a shit and piss show goes on in there. All kinds of bacteria, and you're just walking barefoot through it like you're Christ. Jesus Christ, your fucking girlfriend's got to wash your feet when you come in. It just, it just, it's, that to me, that takes a fucking 10 all the way down to about, well, if we're just talking sex, who's kidding who, a nine and a half. But if we're talking about the mother of your children, it's just, it's done. It's a done fucking deal. If she is an adult, if her feet are going to be that dirty, how filthy are your fucking kids' feet going to be? Yeah, you want to jump in on it? Grab a microphone. Um, no, like late at night. That night we stayed out uh, Friday night, and we ended up at the uh, the deli there. I'm trying to grab me a microphone here. Would that be in my bag? Ah, Christ, I don't Your know backpack? where it is. My backpack, yes. <laughs> my pack that I put on my back. Yes. A.K.A. my backpack. Um, yeah, me and Jay ended up in this, uh, they got like this, Carnegie Deli or Carnegie, depending if you're from the East Coast or the, or, or the Midwest. I've noticed that in Pittsburgh, it's always Carnegie. East Coast, it's Carnegie. Oh, traveling. Um, so we were there, and these two girls got into this, who didn't have shoes on, kind of got into this drunken, like, sort of, ha <laughs> ha, little fucking play fight. So one of them kind of falls down, and her legs go up in the air like right up over the booth and I was standing there waiting to order and I just saw her f the filthy soles of her feet and uh it just I I can't say it made me lose my appetite it I don't I'm just I'm just babbling here cuz you know what I'm doing I'm trying to find the other fucking microphone and you know we brought it and you know we brought it cuz you brought it cuz I brought it for you there um, it is there it is no all right, so it's down here. Here it is. Ah, oh, there it is. Was that, is this an entertaining podcast? This podcast has now been renamed Two People Looking for a Microphone. So, Nia, when we finally get this hooked up, evidently you're going to weigh in on this? <laughs> I want to weigh, yeah. You want to weigh in on it? I want to weigh in. You want to have your two cents? Yes, please. Hey, has Donald Trump been knocked out of the race yet? I'm really rooting that he stays in the longest. Just so he can. Just be, continue to be the most entertaining person on it because everybody else is going to go Al Gore. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, education. We got we to gotta do things. Hello? Yeah, hang on one second. Let's see what we got here. All right. Check, check, check. Two, 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 check. <laughs> All right. So wh what are your feelings? No, I want, yeah, talking about the uh, Dirty women feet bitches. Their... Dirty feet bitches. Yeah, here's the thing. I, I agree with you. DBBs. If you can't, if you can't handle your heels... You don't need to be wearing them. That's really the bottom line. And I know you want to look cute. I want to look cute. I want to wear high, sexy, gorgeous heels that make my legs and ass look Bitches amazing. Bitches want to be looking cute. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can't handle it, you need to not wear them. You need to save your highest, sexiest, but most like goddamn looking shoes that shows off your pedicure when you have a date or whatever. When you're getting picked up and you go in the car, in the restaurant, back in the car, back to the crib. Otherwise, you don't need to be wearing. If you're going out dancing, you need to find some cute shoes that are a lower heel that you can dance in and you can walk in you so question. you don't look crazy because I can't stand that either. Whenever I see a woman walking around with their bare feet, I want to scream at them. Like, don't, just don't do it if you, you know can't handle it. You know what's great, too? You know what's great? If you can't great? handle it, don't do it. And also, save your feet. Be smart. It's not worth it. It's really not worth it looking like, what's the hey, word I want to use? Can I say something? A trashy mess. Can I get a word Tracing through the casino with no shoes on. You know what else is great? Not is worth it. It's when they take the shoes off. 
And then just now they look like this little stumpy person in this short dress and the <laughs> illusion <laughs> of all the other women. You're like, oh, my God, look how long those legs are. You really start doing the math. You start knocking off a few inches. I have shoes that I wear if I'm going to a concert. Well, see, the thing is, I, I feel like if I go to a concert, I'm not doing that standing room shit because I'm too old for it anyway. But I have shoes. If I'm going out, is it gonna fucked be like up that I floor. say that I'm not? I wouldn't marry someone that takes their shoes off. That's that's a lock the door test. That's it's a little it's extreme. Over. The lock the door. Yeah, test? Do any of your are friends? You talking, are you talking about the car door thing from a Bronx, Bronx tale? tale? Yeah. <laughs> do any of your girlfriends are they the take the shoes off people? No. Do you know? Do you, do you have any dirty feet bitches like in your crew? No, I don't have any dirty feet bitches in my crew. <laughs> You keep them on or you don't wear them. Seriously, though. Well, there you go. So why the hell would you fucking marry that and have a kid? Well, I don't know if they you got need that to like half have, I don't know fucking... think you need to make the leap from you take off your shoes to equals I'm not going to marry you. That's that's a bit of a that's a bit of a stretch, don't Unbreedable. you think? Unbreedable. Unbreedable. <laughs> yeah, you're done. I no. might I might I might have to add that into the fucking act as far as like the people that, you know, when I when I'm Doing my cleanse of the population so the water supply stays where it needs to be. Oh, that would be also, another person I would get rid of. Women who take their shoes off <laughs> when the final ten percent of the night are content to walk down a public fucking street. You know, also women their bare feet. Why don't you put in inserts, insoles into your shoes? I have insoles in all of my heels. They get the clear ones, the Dr. Scholl's. I know you feel like an old lady going into that section but i have them in every single pair of heels because and even still they hurt my fucking feet the because other they're night dumb, yeah. when we because went they're to dumb people we why the would Michael they go Jackson out and go show? do something you're asking them why don't they do something smart yeah well maybe because they're dumb smart. who kind of fucking pro- i don't give a shit if i was wearing snowshoes when we went there's to the no michael fucking jackson way i wouldn't show? i would i would take those off and walk barefoot across the casino when we went to the michael jackson show those shoes that i was wearing gorgeous amazing hurt my expensive. feet like a bitch expensive i put the insoles Annoying. in them unnecessary they still hurt and i stuck it out i stuck it fucking out because i had committed myself to wearing them and i wasn't gonna quit and i wasn't gonna look like one of those girls because that's messy that's ba, sloppy ba, ba, you don't want to look ba, like ba, that ba, 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 yeah ba, ba, i rocky ba, ba, that shit ba, 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 ba. yeah nini boo yeah you gotta um, just take it deal with it and if you can't hang then don't by wear the way it. michael sorry. jackson's show <gasps> was amazing oh, amazing even with the scooby-doo kids <laughs> That was a weird. <laughs> no, that was for the kids. But I, gotta, I don't want to ruin the show. But at one point, I, I challenge any kids. person to go to that show. And at some point, you're not thinking, just put on the fucking hat. Just put on the fucking hat. I, that musical theater. <laughs> whoa. Ew, ew, I it's get a, it. The a, hat has power. Put yeah. it on and do your fucking <laughs> dance already. Jesus Christ. It's a Cirque du Soleil show. It's called One. It's tremendous please go see the show and i challenge you not to time cry. magazine says <laughs> all right i'm gonna talk about I hockey laughed, now. i cried i'm gonna talk about hockey oh now. so this is the part where i dip out right this is part and this is the part where i saw thank you for not being a, a, a dirty feet bitch <laughs> <laughs> i love you too <laughs> fucking animals um so anyways uh oh let's talk nhl hockey here jesus christ the bruins are, are, are going through a a whole fucking rebuild here. I, I, you know what? I, the only reason why Dougie Hamilton getting traded did not shock me was because the first half of this tour, I, I was, I was working with Joe Bartnick, who knows as much about hockey as anybody on the NHL channel, and he was saying like, uh, he was just doing his Bartnick thing, just saying like they should get rid of Dougie Hamilton. He's too much of a hit on the cap. You want to keep McQuaid. He's a stay-at-home guy on defense. He sticks up for his teammate. Every team in the NHL is looking for a guy like Adam McQuaid. That's the guy you keep. Dougie's too soft, blah, blah, blah. And I was just sitting there going, I like him. He's kind of offensive. But everything that he fucking said, and the guy gets shipped off to Calgary. I still loved him. But I never saw them trading Lucic. I mean, that, that guy, he, he's the fucking locomotive. He's the toughest guy on our fucking team, and now he's gone. Like, come on, Lucic going down, crashing the fucking net. Who's going to do that now? You know, putting Ryan Miller in his place. Who's going to do that now? Sorry, Buffalo fans. I'm fucking with you. I know he got frustrated because he thought he had a breakaway, and it bounced over his stick, so he acted a little childish there. Who's going to stab someone in the balls 
when we need him to. Sorry, I'm actually bringing up his worst thing. Other than that, yeah, he's a fucking force. So now he goes to the Kings. And to me, once again, the West is way more fucking interesting than the East. How will Chicago respond to that force of nature that is Milan Lucic that's now with the Kings? The only thing I liked about the trade is I live in L.A., so it's yet another reason to go see that great team, even though they didn't make the playoffs last year. So um, all I will say about this is I hope the Bruins know what they're doing. It's the exact same thing I said about the Patriots a couple years ago when they, they, they did it. Don't, I can't remember who the fuck they traded. And I was just like, I hope they know what they're doing. And uh, evidently they did because we just won a Super Bowl. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, what, I'm a fucking comedian. What do I know about building a goddamn team? I'll tell you right now, I didn't like us getting rid of our GM. The guy obviously did a great fucking job. He won a Stanley Cup. He makes one stupid comment. And everybody listens to Dan Shaughnessy, who doesn't watch hockey on any level. I don't give a shit. They need to make a move. Does Dan Shaughnessy even write articles anymore? Or does he just take, like, fucking articles he's already written a thousand times and just pull fucking words out and put new new players' names in there? I, don't, don't, I, I rip on that guy too much. You know what I mean? I rip on him too much. But the only time he really bugs me is when he fucking... Uh, is when he when he trashes the Bruins. It's like, dude, you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't even watch the goddamn sport, all right? So just shut up then. Anyways. Um, oh, dude, so we pull in here to uh, Tucson. Tucson, Arizona. And uh, we're driving down the street. We're a little bit lost. And we get into this shit part of fucking town, you know? And we're driving down the street in this fucking white trash looking dude walking up the street just gives the finger to the bus as we drive by <laughs> Lawhead's going you see that guy he's, he's giving us the finger what's he giving us the finger for it's like Jesus Jay do the math look at the neighborhood what do you think the fuck you think's happening he's blaming his whole fucking life on us rather than whatever got him into that situation be it racism or whatever well not racism he's white I don't know what the fuck it was, but it wasn't the bus. Fucking bus. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. It made me really uncomfortable. It's like, uh, should we be driving through here in this thing? Maybe we should have taken a fucking taxi. Um, anyway, so uh, so here we are. We got one. I got to read some of this fucking advertising. Was it 6.15? It's one of the great things about being a guy. You can take a shower in like fucking three minutes. Shake off like a goddamn hound, right? Poor women got to go in there, you know? Put on all that clown makeup. Put on their shoes that are going to make their feet fucking hurt, you know? it's a lot of advantages. All right, here we go. So there you go. Oh, that's 31 minutes. 31 minutes in. All right, so right now I'm going to hit pause. And I'm going to go. Ah, fuck that. I can keep going here, right? Can I keep going? No, I should get off. Oh, she's saying to get off the horn. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. This fucking maniac. Jesus Christ, you know, do, do, do people know how to be at a fucking show? Certain people you hook up, they're fucking cool. Other people you hook up and they're, oh, I'm here. Now I'm here. Oh, now I'm calling your phone. Oh, is everything going to be okay? Relax. Tickets going to be there. You're going to sit there, right? Your wife's going to take off her shoes, get her feet all dirty. You're going to slam a couple of fucking scotches. And I'm going to get up there and do a little fucking clown dance for you. All right? Fucking an hour and 40 minutes before the show. I, I still, I, I haven't even put my red nose on yet. <laughs> oh, I was old Billy sport coat Saturday night in Vegas. Came out there with a pocket square and everything. And I actually stuck it out. And I wore the jacket for the whole show. Oh my God, this motherfucker. Um, and I wore the jacket for the whole show, even though it was starting to get hot. The only, actually, the only real reason why I didn't take it off was because uh, I had a white shirt underneath it, and I'm pasty as fuck. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to be up there looking like a head on top of a fucking candlestick. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways, oh, by the way, if you're just into working out, you know, the, that Michael Jackson show, those Cirque du Soleil people are fucking unbelievable. This one guy, he does a routine on this rope, climbing this rope up and down the fucking thing, 80, 80 fucking different ways for a whole song. 
If you can go up a climb rope, climbing rope, a climb rope, a climbing rope, and come back down using your feet, you know, that's impressive. If you can do it without using your feet, that's even more impressive. But what this guy was doing was just on a whole other level. And then the biggest beast of the show was this one woman who came out and was basically uh, one of the strongest human beings I've ever seen in my life. She was doing stuff that just defied. Even some of the stuff like I've seen that, um, like you ever see those guys like do like the human flag and then they'll do like this, this woman did all of that and she would do it for, for like five minute chunks. She just she didn't do it. And that's how you do the human flag. And then that's it. She'd be in that position for like 20 seconds and then go into something even harder. I remember her, her finishing fucking move. She's upside down. On, on, you know, I guess it's called a stripper pole, you know, but what she did was so artistic. We'll just say it was like a street sign pole, just to give her some class there. Um, pole dancing. All right, there you go. Whatever. So she fucking was upside down in a full split with no hands. Does that thing where you just sort of let yourself slide down the pole and then you stop yourself. When people do that with their hands. That's amazing. She did it upside down in a split, and she did it with her legs and a smile on her face that never betrayed any sort of pain. It was, it was the greatest display of, uh, I don't know. She was unbelievable. She was unfucking believable. Pic- oh, I, I can't say what I was just going to say. I was going to say picture so-and-so in a bikini, but that, that would have been bad. Um, anyways, all right. That's it for Sober Bill. Hang in there, and through the magic of uh, editing, I will be back in about two seconds, and I'll be a little bit happier. Maybe a little more hoarse in the voice, and definitely a lot more, uh, well, I'm not buzzed at all right now. I'll have a couple of fucking, I'll throw down a couple of, you know, whatever. All right. Go fuck yourself. I'll talk to you in a minute. All right, now I'm back. The magical mystery tour is coming to take you away. I don't even know why that's in my fucking head. And now I'm not drunk. I've had two Bud Lights. You know, I might as well have some Raisin Bran. It's such a weak fucking beer. Um, all right, so I did the last show. And uh, great crowd and all that type of shit. I had a wonderful time in this conference room. And uh, thank you to everybody who came out to the shows and everybody came out to the tour. Um, and, uh, you know, and I'm going to leave it at that. Cause, uh, yeah, yeah. How do I not say it? You have to say it. I can't, uh, he, he was, they, you know, they were having a, uh, they were having one of those days down there. You have to say it. I can't say it. Why? I, uh, you know, why? I don't, wait, what are you going to fucking do? I don't, you know, Listen, how else are they going to know? That's, that's not the way you go about it. Well, I sit know. there and I act like everything was fine. No, 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 no. You're not jumping on this talking that shit. I'm not going to talk shit. Yeah, you are. No, no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. it. I'm not doing it. Shh. I, Shush. The man has spoken. And he said, woman. Shush. <sighs> oh, geez, geez. All right. Let's get into the fucking questions here. All right. Oh, questions. Hey, Nia, Nia, you know, I'm just having one of those days. You know, I'm just having one of those just days. Just having one of those I'm days. Just having one of those days. That's why everything's oh, all just fucked up. one of those up. days. All right. Jack Williams. <laughs> Jack Williams. Billy Lansdowne Street. Not sure if you heard this. Lansdowne Street. Yeah. Right down near Fenway Park. Yeah, Back Lansdowne. in the day, you wouldn't go down there at night. Now you can skip down the street. <laughs> you can. <laughs> tra la la I love Lansdowne Street. Used to hang out there during college. All right. WBZ4 Boston News anchor Jack Williams retired this week. Mm. Wow. I, you know, I'm afraid to see how old he is. That's going to make me feel even fucking older than I am. Can you please give a short speech about him as though you were at his retirement party? Well, I'm at his retirement party, so I'd be half in the bag. Yep. Oh, I want to say something. <laughs> going to wake up, people. <laughs> Jack Williams. Fucking Jack. I love you, man. <laughs> we're both redheads. <laughs> we're both in this business. I used to watch you when I was a kid, and you were funny as hell. You and Liz Walker had a great rapport, and uh, you always had a great sense of humor, and that stuff you did for the kids, Wednesday's Child. He's just, I love that guy. I can't believe he's retired. That guy, I mean, I'm not going to act like I'm at his retirement party. That guy was the best. He is the best. Total professional, and he was funny as hell, and he had a great sense of humor. Um, 
Then the bet, well, the, I used to watch them way back in the day. It was Jack Williams, Liz Walker, and Bob Lobel did the sports. And that was it. And then they throw it to Bob. New my, new me. They throw it <laughs> to him. Me. And that poor bastard, I remember when we used to go to Patriots games, he, he did this thing one year. For some stupid reason, they thought this would be a good idea. And this is back, they sent him to, to Sullivan Stadium. Sully. It might even have been Schaefer Stadium back then. They wanted to do this thing whenever the Patriots were right down on the goal line. They would record him, you know, for the segments later on in the news for him to be like, you know, and, you know, and it's whatever, 328 in the third quarter, the Patriots were down on the one yard line. And then they would just, he would turn around and then if they scored, He'd say, and Tony Collins ran the ball in, blah, 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 blah. So he fucking would go down there, and we're all hammered. And he'd be taking a knee, and we'd just wait for his lips to start moving. Mm -hmm. And we'd all just start screaming, fucking no me! No me! (laughs) He'd be down on one knee. I remember at one point, he was looking like he was getting upset, and then he just sort of just put the mic down, like he had it in his hand, but he just sort of let it go down like that. He just shook his head and started laughing. It's just like, why would you do that to the guy? So anyways... Um, all three of them, they were funny as hell. Bob Newmeyer was great, too. And now he does all the horse racing and everything. So another Boston legend retires. Jack Williams, thank you for all your great news class and uh, the Wednesday's child and all that stuff. You were awesome. So there you go. I hope other people gave a fuck about that who weren't from Boston. All right. Advice for my daughter. <laughs> Uh, top of the morning to you, standard redhead joke that everybody's done a zillion times. All right. I want to thank you in advance for any advice you have for me or my daughter. My daughter is 13. I'm going to say it the whole way through. Is 13 and doesn't have many interests, at least none that she is willing to stick with. Well, she's only 13, dude. What the fuck? She's got to pick a career? <laughs> You're screaming at her every night. Is it going to be finance? You're going to be a nurse, <laughs> mom. <laughs> However, there seems to be one subject that keeps com- coming up uh, that she asks uh, my help with, and that's comedy. She's a funny and incredibly sarcastic kid. My favorite type of humor. Well, she probably got it from you then. Yeah, I was just about to say. Yeah. That. Oh, cause she's daddy's little, little sarcastic girl. girl, and she wants to learn how to write jokes. I have searched for classes, but they appear to be given at a comedy club, and I don't think they would want a thirteen-year-old girl around. You wouldn't want to bring a thirteen-year-old girl down to a comedy club. They've got to have person like a sailor. They've got to have some kids programs, don't they? Do that. Let me finish before oh. you. Come in here with your wisdom. Can you recommend <laughs> any kind of book or video class that she can study? I've seen a lot of material, but I'm not sure what will help her get started. Big fan and appreciate any suggestions that you may have. And if you read this on the advice show, please give me a heads up. I will have her. How the fuck would I give you? I don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> what is the advice show? Uh, let her hear it directly from you and not shittily passed along from her moron father and i would like to count how many mistakes you made reading this letter i kept the well you want to talk about mistakes dude when you said at least none that she's willing you spelt none n-o-n all right fucko (laughs) i kept the word small for your illiterate ginger ass they're such arrogant cunts maybe this is why your daughter doesn't like to share interest because you're kind of a prick (laughs) no he is you know what it is he's worried that i'm gonna shit on him so he's gonna shit on me first so anyways, uh, first of all, Emerson College, all of a sudden now you can major in comedy. I heard that tonight. Yeah, which kind of makes sense it considering uh, the, the comedic, tickets. The comedic legends that have graduated from the school, no, just such the, as Bill Burr. Just the tickets that comics are selling. When I started out, there was a handful of people playing theaters. Mm-hmm. And that would be like George Carlin, Bill Cosby. Uh, see, I'm already forgetting. I mean, maybe those guys that had their t- TV shows. When I started, Seinfeld still hadn't become a hit yet, so he he was probably just selling out clubs. Maybe Roseanne Barr, if she gave a fuck enough at that point, because Roseanne was still going. But there was a, I mean, it was a short, short, short list. And now there's like a zillion people out there. It seems they're all playing theaters. They're all writing new hours and everything. Like, I don't. I, there's never mm-hmm. been a more prolific time. So I think they're finally seeing it when like. How many fucking comics have sold out Madison Square Garden? Like yeah. that was like it was like Eddie Murphy did it, Dice Clay did it, 
and then Dane Cook did it. So there was like a fucking, there was two guys in the 80s, nobody in the 90s that I knew of, no comic in the 90s that I know of that, that wasn't, well, Eddie had already stopped. Dice maybe did it in 1990. But, uh, and Seinfeld? It, no, was he doing I, I don't the think show? He, yeah, he was doing the show. Um, that was when a lot of yeah comics were doing their own TV shows. Yeah, Tim Allen. Yeah, I don't know how it happened, Ray but all Romano. of a sudden now, you know, there's like, like I think I know like five people that sold the fucking thing out. So it might it's now a uh, it's fo- it's finally I think it's comedy. Well, maybe that they're having is like comedy writing in that, but I always look at it as like being a comedian. It's actually a a a. It's a career now where people used to kind of look at it, even though it always was a career, but it was always kind of viewed as like it was a stepping stone to get a sitcom. I find it strange that like you major in comedy. It's cool, but it's like it's such a weird thing. So they're probably It is gonna weird. St- do you have to be funny in like your application and shit like, like right, how, how exactly. do you do that? They probably do like the acting program where you have to do some material. They probably study all like the history of comedy from the very beginning, like vaudeville up until now. They watch a ton of specials. They probably have to write. It's kind of like when I did Emerson and I graduated with a media arts degree, right? We watched a shitload of movies. We wrote a lot of papers about it. That's probably what they're going to do. They have to do some sort of performance. Right. Well, right now, I I would say his question was, what can you do now? I would just say. What city are they? Do they say what city they're in? I don't know. Listen, I would just say just watch as many comedians as as you can or watch as many comedies as you can. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, depending if you want to be a writer or something like that. I mean, these these are the fun years. Like, there's no, like, you're 13. I mean, it's not yeah, like exactly. something it'll probably, it'll probably change. It should be in, enjoy. No, but it should be in enjoyable. <laughs> it should be enjoyable. Yeah, why are you trying to make it a career for her already? Because no, no, he no. loves her. No, I know, I know. I'm just joking. But also, um, they do, do improv classes for people that age. That's a good fun thing to do. That, don't do. Don't take an improv class at 13. Why? That's like teaching a kid how kids. to throw a fucking curveball. He's they're too young. Well, if you try to teach a kid when he's they too young it. to throw a curveball, and he let me fun. finish, you get fucking interrupting me here. They're fucking. Uh, they they get the Tommy John surgery. Now what? Now you're gonna pout on me? I'm not pouting. There you are. That's your pout face. <laughs> Is this my pout? Yeah, face? Yeah, I, I was trying. I had, I had a nice fucking reference there about throwing the curveball. It was going well, and you you were jumping in on me. So I decided to defend myself. And now you know what's gonna happen. You're gonna fucking. You're within. Three more dumb things of me saying of doing that thing where you cross your arms and you fucking look in the other direction. My and arms I, are already half crossed. I know. Yeah. And then I'm I say, what's there. wrong? And you go, nothing. Nothing's wrong. <laughs> Something's wrong. You got your fucking arms crossed. I don't understand what a, her going to an improv class is, is. Why is that a bad idea? Because a lot of those improv uh, theaters, they also do comedy writing workshops and all that kind of stuff. I'll tell you be what, good. because anybody she who's, how to perform. who's in comedy and their job is to teach 13-year-olds how to do improv, <laughs> they stink. <laughs> they married a rich guy and they're fucking bored and now they, they think, oh, maybe this is my uh, talent. And they're going to teach him more shit. I had this is this is what you do. teachers, not when I was 13. Not when you were 13. Fuck that. that. This is what you do. when I was 13, but... Hang out with your friends and f- joke around and be funny and, and find out the movies that, you know, make your generation laugh. Just do that. Just This this is the f- this should be fun. Mm. It should be fun. Yeah, that's a good point. shouldn't be, you know, turning this into like the sports dads, which was the reference where they teach them how to throw a fucking curveball at 13. And the, the movement that you do when you throw it, you're snapping your wrists like that. The tendons in their arms are still growing or whatever. I don't know what it is medically, but they, they, their arm is not strong enough to do it. And these kids need Tommy John surgery. Which is basically you take a ligament out of your fucking leg and replace it in the elbow from – they should be skipping rocks across the, a fucking lake. You know the advice that I gave? No, you're absolutely right. The advice I gave – Holy is shit. The kind of Can advice. you say that again? What? That's all right. I have it recorded. Good. Oh, when I said that you're right? <laughs> you said absolutely right. I don't think I've ever heard that. Uh, the advice I just gave is the kind of advice my, my dad would give, where he'd be like, well, get into a class and take this and do this writing thing and da-da-da-da. He would make it this whole big stage parent Regimented thing. thing. Well, there's yeah. a time and place for that, That's and it's not point. when you're 13. 13, yeah. you should be walking home from school if they didn't have you fucking believing there's a pedophile behind every fucking tree. <laughs> you should be goofing off with your friends and, and just... You shouldn't know how to make people laugh. You should just be fucking making people laugh. You don't want to break it down and be like, oh, I just made my, my 
13 year old friend left. Well, let's see. Let's look at the setup and what was the punchline. You're going to start doing. Right. Oh, here comes my. You know what I'm going to do today at school? You know what I'm going to do today? You're 13. I'm going to work on my misdirections. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you wouldn't believe it. I tagged this whole thing about the lunch lady. You don't want to do that. Just fucking have, have suck a, all the fun out of it. Exactly. Just, I would say, watch the legends of today, like Melissa McCarthy, Kristen Wiig. Mm-hmm. What, 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 what the fuck you're into? And, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. That, that's what I would do. That's I, I, good advice. Yeah, I don't stick her in a fucking comedy class. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> File that under, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Comedy, what is it? <laughs> Webster's Dictionary the sound, the sound defines comedy as... <laughs> what is this thing that we call comedy? All right, veg- vegetarian barbecue. Okay, oh, Billy Boy. The pipes, the pipes are calling. Ah, there you go, there's something new. Oh, Billy Boy. I'll do justice. The pipes, the pipes are calling. Who's that song I was singing? You should keep watching the fucking repeats of True Detective. From the dusty road. <laughs> that and song something, is... something else. <laughs> when the ring of rear. <laughs> Fucking phenomenal show. I can't wait to see... Uh, Vince and that guy from the phone booth movie. Oh my God! You said the phone booth. Wow! You're oh, really the, re- oh you're, the sushi restaurant. You're really reaching back into Colin Farrell's uh, IMDb page with phone booth. I don't see movies. That's the last one I saw, <laughs> and I just saw that to be like, how did these cheap fucks? Because they want to have a movie with the guy standing in a phone booth. But wasn't it in Times Square or something like that? So it wasn't cheap to shoot that. I know, and it was a phone booth, and it was like 2003, <laughs> and they didn't exist anymore. <laughs> Um, I like your impression of that song, the theme song from True Detective. Do it again. Why? Because <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no, I love the song, too, until you watched every episode 500 times. I'd be just walking around my, the house <laughs> quiet. From the dusty bowl. <laughs> oh, God. She's watching another one. That is the Handsome Family, a husband and wife band who do that music and they also do the the theme to the new season and they're amazing and i love their music now i love that gothic kind of becomes eclectic oh i am oh i'm so kcrw with it right now (laughs) sorry you sound like you're high right now all right (laughs) oh i wish vegetarian (laughs) barbecue oh billy boy the pipes the pipes are calling uh last sunday my girlfriend dragged me to a vegetarian barbecue Full disclosure, I was told that there would be grilled chicken skewers uh, there, but I didn't see a single one. It sounds like something in Silver Lake. And we got there on time. Maybe that's how they lure people over. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's a vegetarian barbecue. Terrible. That's like, hey, let's go to this gay sex orgy. I swear to God, there's going to be some hetero action going on over there. So and I walked over out. there, and everybody's banging me in the ass. And I was just like, have I been duped here? I really went a long way to make that point. Sorry. Um, you have to bring your own food to shit like this. Yeah. All right. Instead, I, you should have brought the biggest fucking <laughs> reddest steak you could find. It, it slapped it on right, on right next to their dumb portobello mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. What's up, pussies? That's how a man eats. I know I'm going to die before you, but I can look myself in the eye when I do. Whatever dumb things meat, meat eaters say. <laughs> not like I don't eat meat. And not like I'm not dumb. But I like vegetables. All right. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't see a single one in the time. Blah, blah, blah. Instead, I only saw vegetable skewers, <laughs> grilled corn, and a bowl of orzo. I didn't want to know what that is. It's a grain. It's like orzo? rice. It's like rice pilaf. That's what it tastes like. Oh, is that going to be the new craze? Orzo, the new craze. Some it's a very pretentious salad side. And wheat pita bread. <sighs> Not even regular pita. They couldn't even give me that. <laughs> I feel bad fucking, for this I person. I do too, this poor bastard. There's nothing worse when somebody fucks with the food. The only saving grace were a key lime pie, okay, and mm-hmm. chips and dip and some decent beer. That's pretty good. That's pretty strong. Uh, I could maybe forgive the veggie barbecue if the people holding it weren't the most obnoxious hipsters of as well. Of course. They were both artists, shocker, and painful to listen to as they clatter on about... <laughs> About their vinyl collection and knowledge of obscure sci-fi shows. Again, did this take place in Silver Lake? Or Brooklyn. Or, or, yeah, fucking, or Williamsburg. Yeah, but those aren't the only two hipster places. Yeah, that's true. The guy even 
has this weird nub of a ponytail coming out of the bottom of his head. He's so cool he can't even have a normal ponytail. Uh, anyways, is it against the laws of men to have a barbecue without grilling any meat, be it burgers, dogs, brats, etc.? Nothing, anything, nothing, anything against vegetarians. See, half the time, not half the time, but a third of the time. That's the way they write it. Not my dumb fucking brain. Nothing, Two anything against. What is he trying to say there? Not that I have anything against vegetarians or their closet diets, but I feel like something has to die for a barbecue to go on. Wondering what your thoughts are on this subject. Thanks, and go frog yourself. Um, yeah, you basically went to a barbecue where all they had was the sides. You know what I mean? They had the zucchini and they had all that type of shit. Um, I, the, I think a mistake that vegetarians make is they try to replace classic meat dishes. Yeah. That's like if you, you went we on have stage. Tofu- uh, to- was it tofurkey? Tofuki, like it's like the fake turkey. Yeah, don't try to be turkey unless you're turkey, right? Right. Like don't a, fake like, the turkey. Yeah, like a steak doesn't try to be zucchini. Exactly. Because it could never, it could never be it zucchini. It could never be zucchini. <laughs> zucchini needs to follow its voice. <laughs> no, if they had, I mean, if they had any kind of common decency, they would have a separate little hibachi for the the meat eaters. I don't have sympathy for this guy. He knew what it was. They said it was. They did lie to him about the chicken. We have a little bit of chicken yeah. or something like that. But you have to bring your own food to these type of things. You can't rely on on them. You got to bring your own shit. And just bring it cooked because, yeah, I was just saying, yeah, throw the steak on next to their dumb pork you know bottle funny? mushrooms. But they'll be like, no, 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 I don't want it on the same thing. Man, 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 man. Like, you just got to bring your own shit. You know when this when this idea was presented to him, his inner voice said, I don't want to fucking go to that. I don't want to go to that fucking shit. Yeah. You got to listen to that, sir. And then you won't have to hang out with these people. If I was ever invited to a vegan or vegetarian barbecue, I would say no. Do you remember that time we had the vegetarian Thanksgiving? We tried to do that. Oh, God. My family disaster. revolted against me. And that's how I learned my lesson. Yeah. I was like, I want to do a vegan thing. It'll be just as delicious. It wasn't just as delicious. It was awful. And but we, they but were we like, didn't know what, what we didn't know how to cook, but we, we also tra- did not to do it. Yeah. And we were trying to be really healthy. We had just moved to LA, blah, blah, blah. It's a couple, douche couple of douchebags. A couple of douchebags. And had, we had a douchebag Thanksgiving. Was that when I spilled half of the stuffing behind the stove and started crying? <laughs> was that that year? I think so. Oh, no, 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 no. We made a vegetarian lasagna one Thanksgiving. Oh, God, it was a terrible idea. It's awful. Those fucking carrots in there. Yeah. Carrots, that, carrots and lasagna. Terrible. Awful. So then I, then you know what? Uh, Jamie Masada down the Laugh Factory, he has this thing where he feeds the homeless people mm-hmm. down there, and he asked me if I wanted to do it, and I was like, no, man, it's my Thanksgiving. I, I don't want to, I don't, you know, I, I did it a couple times, and it's just like, I don't want to fucking go down there. And then you have to go on stage. He always talks you into going on stage, mm-hmm. and you're sitting there, and there's a bunch of homeless people eating, and they don't give a fuck, and you go up and you <laughs> bomb. <laughs> Last time I was there, I remember me and Ian Edwards just fucking ate. It's funny to, to eat it on Thanksgiving, you know? It's a nice idea. They oh, get, it's a great, on get, paper, on paper. It's Thanksgiving a great dinner fucking idea. and a they, comedy show. So well, they they're laugh, fine. They eat, they're fine. Know. They're fine with just the food. Yeah, they don't need. <laughs> yeah, they don't need to be like, hey, how you? So how you guys doing? Not good. We're homeless. <laughs> <laughs> Is it at least open bar? Do they get a couple hey, drinks out of wh- it? Where are you guys from? <laughs> the fucking rail yard. Um, what bus station do you sleep at? That's what you do. You have to switch up all your references. Yeah, this guy must sleep in the bus station out there in Burbank. And all the other homeless people looking down on it because they sleep in the one in fucking Hollywood. <laughs> so I ended up telling you because the vegetarian dinner was so bad. I said, hey, I'm going to go down and go feed the homeless. Cause right, That's right. Because right next door. You sneaky son of a bitch. And then right you next, went to Greenblatt's, Greenblatt's. And you ate a Thanksgiving dinner. A full dinner. turkey dinner. <laughs> And I wolfed it down, and I felt so fucking guilty. No. And then I ran over to the Laugh Factory, completely full, and had a big smile on my face, and I fed some homeless people. And Jamie's like, you want to go on stage? I go, no. He's like, come on, buddy. That's going to be fun. He's like, Jamie, I'm not going up and eating my balls in front of these fucking people. They, they, they're, good, they're good with the food. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. No, you did the right thing by, by having a full uh, Thanksgiving yeah, dinner. Yeah, I did. But, I don't but, blame but, you. But me helping the homeless was, was horseshit that year. I, I did not do it. <laughs> I went. <laughs> I didn't go down there because I had to help the homeless. I went down there because I wanted a fucking turkey dinner. Um, all right. 
what are we up to here as far as time? 22 minutes. We did 35, so I'm up to 57. All right, dilemma. Uh, another redhead joke. Hey, who would know? Who, who, who would have thought? <laughs> would you let P. Diddy, or anyone else that matter, hit you in the head with a kettlebell for $50 million? No. I don't understand the point of these, like random scenario questions that people like to pose like would you rather get fucked in the ass by a centaur or no no but if, if it's like, if it's a fun, have a gargoyle like give you an if it's funny though if it's funny though if it's it's a if they're funny scenarios you give some, you give somebody two awful choices he just said would that you, was a dilemma. Was one situation? Yeah, so there wasn't a dilemma. Would you do that? Would you let P. Diddy... And why, why, why is P. Diddy in it? Why is that... What does that have to do with it? This is the thing where people pull things out of their ass that I have a problem with. It's lazy. It's like, Stu, would you, would you let P. Diddy hit you in the head of the kettlebell for 50 million bucks? Like, what are you, 13? Yeah, That's but I said no. A lot of, a lot of people would, would say yes. Oh, just because? If for the money? No, if I wasn't doing what I was doing for a living and if I wasn't comfortable, then, yeah, I'd let, I'd let him drop it on my toe. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I'm, I'm doing all right. So, uh, no. <laughs> I don't have 50 million. I don't have anyone near that. I just, but, I mean, I'm not doing that. And then somebody videotapes it. Oh, that big fucking kettle bell <laughs> fail for the rest that of my literally fucking life. Was, that, was the entire, that was the entire question. I got to be honest with you. I wouldn't want to make it that way. Make what? What way? Why are you holding the mic like the... I don't know. You're not supposed to. You have a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're like, like you're going to sing into it. Um, no, I wouldn't want to make it that way. What are you talking about? Make what? What way? Like all of a sudden you got 50 million bucks. Oh, because and now you, now you get yourself a little... you with a kettlebell? Yeah, and you got a little tweed coat on or some shit, and then you're going to some party where everybody else has 50 million bucks. And they're like, oh, you know, I'm a fucking... Uh, I don't know. Well, who are they? Fuck it. I'm a banker. Oh, I, I, I ran a Ponzi scheme. You know, something that took a little bit of effort. American greed. American greed. Um, I just find when people ask dumb questions like that that are meant to be some sort of probe into your usually psychotic. Funny. It didn't work. It didn't work. The way your mind oh, let me give you works, a dilemma, it's Nia. annoying. Let me it's, give it's like it's, it, you're not deep. Yeah, you're being really harsh. Am I? On the dilemma guy. All right. He, he, took, he, took, a, he took a swing. Well, I, I want people to come with a little bit more effort. That's all. Is it is it so wrong that I demand excellence? <laughs> You're an ass. I'm full of shit right now. What's uh, the dilemma you want to pose to me then? All right, let me give you a good one. Would you right. rather? Uh, uh, I don't know any famous people's fucking names, so I'm gonna have to describe them to you. Oh God, this should be good. I'm trying to think. I love when you would try you... to identify actors. <laughs> it's just. All right, would you rather have sex with, uh, uh, I can't even think of anybody. Who's just a fucking, just somebody you wouldn't want to have sex with? An actor or like? No, an astronaut. <laughs> like, who's going to relate to fucking anything other than this shit? Uh, okay, the guy in Seven who got force-fed the fucking SpaghettiOs oh my until God. he died. You want to... <laughs> Fuck him, and he's in that makeup. <laughs> and when he fucks, he goes, wah, wah, wah. Okay. or, 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 uh, <clears throat> put some jam on your hoo ha and let some sort of animal <laughs> lick it off. You have to bang the fucking spaghetti okay <laughs> until completion. <laughs> and, uh, and then he spends the night. <laughs> And one or the you can put some jam. No, I'm gonna go on, I'm, on your who? Oh, Nene. I'm gonna go that, with and the that, first that, one. That'll I'm be, go that'll be over. That'll be over, and, and it'll be over <laughs> in <laughs> no. 37 seconds. I cannot be involved in the sexual situation with an animal on any level. 28 I seconds, go, it's over. I will go with the fat <laughs> guy spending the night. I'm not gonna get uh, into any uh, kind of bestiality. No, 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 no. You, no, you let nothing. The, you let it do it to you for. <laughs> 10 seconds the animal oh my god you're <laughs> disgusting <laughs> no nothing with an animal no right, absolutely the not here's no the thing. nothing here's with the an thing. animal ever wasn't that funny that was funny there you go see but that wasn't funny well fuck he's not a fucking comedian 
Well, you, you, what you're going to do is you're going to make everybody gun shy to fucking take a big swing and a. Everybody has a swing and a miss. Oh, no, 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 no. They're going to like tweet and send in all kinds of crazy dilemmas now, which it actually should be kind of fun. I just don't like it when they just don't make any sense. And they're just, I actually like, just gave shit. you a hacky one because they, 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 they're always sexual. So like right. I because when we were doing the dilemmas, what happens is it just became. It just it just kept going sex. Would you rather fuck your mom or fuck your dad? <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's just like Jesus Christ. Um, it's like watch one of those Comedy Central roasts where like by the time you get up, if you're like ninth on one of the thing, you, like the level of mean you have to be, mm-hmm. especially because all of those fucking roasts, so many of them were just like the the comics roasting the person didn't know them, so they didn't have any personal stories. So it was just, you know, everybody but what are those chomping dilemma- on the same steak. But what are these dilemmas or the would you rather scenarios? Like, what are these things attempting to prove? Like, yeah, if someone's like, would you rather have sex with your mom Nothing. or sex it's with your dad? It's just supposed to be funny. I was just supposed to be like, a, I'm, I'm looking yeah. too much into it. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. Oh, would you, would you rather wash dishes at Denny's? Mm-hmm. Or uh, wipe the syrup off the tables at IHOP? Syrup off the tables. Third shift. For a year. <laughs> Wait, you Third can't. Shift. You can't add things on after I answer the question. Oh, you yes, ask I me can. the question. No, no. All right, no, no. Keep I'm going because I, I like these the now. I'm, I'm getting, up, the, I'm I'm getting into the this now. What? You got to wipe the syrup off the fucking tables. Uh huh. I'd rather do that. Third shift. Third shift when all the drunks come in. There's the fights when the mm-hmm. YouTube videos get made. Mm-hmm. Or Denny's. You got the afternoon shift from two to five. Mm-hmm. And you just got to wash all these fucking plates, but they're left over. They're left over. From the or the morning and the lunch rush, wipe off the tables. Hands but down. but you're done two to five, two to five, or you got to work a full fucking eight hours. You come in at ten o'clock at night and you're done at six in the morning. People, but all I have to do is wipe down tables. Yeah, wipe down tables. And then the other for option eight is fucking hours, or you just wash dishes for three hours, and and you have your whole fucking morning mm. to yourself and the whole night. Like okay, the, I may have to. All right, I might have to change that then. I don't know. It's a lot of fucking dishes at IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> no, at Denny's. At Denny's, a lot of dried syrup. You know what I mean? Oh, ketchup and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, people, you have to like scrape off the plates first too and all that shit. You know, like the bus boys, they just put down the Oh, you wait, you wait three months in when you got to clean out the fucking grease trap. Yeah. That's something you'll never forget. Um, no, I'm sticking with the wiping down of the tables because I can kind of have fun. I can like chat with people. I don't want to stand back there for three hours. And people like I've seen people blow their nose and like put the napkin like on the plate and all kinds of disgusting shit. Like I'm not touching that. I'll wipe, put on a pair of gloves and I'll wipe down the table, spray some fucking antiseptic right. or whatever, disinfectant. And you get on home at shit. six. You, you leave at six. You get home at seven in the fucking morning. You're so fucking wired. You can't go to bed until ten at eight. Mm-hmm. And then you fucking sleep until what three four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Then you got to go back in at ten. It's just you have no fucking life. You're like one of those like that guy who's who's in the paparazzi movie. Hey, I'm going to take your picture and then kill my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love when you talk about movies and actors. Hey, yeah. I'm going to take your picture and kill my friend. <laughs> I love that movie too. Wasn't it called Paparazzi? Nocturnal Nightmares. <laughs> um, ooh, did that have Cole Hauser in it? Ooh, no, that one. It was. Cole it was. Hauser. It was. It was the one. Uh, it was the. Um, it was the one with Goran East 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 and Ivich, something like that. <laughs> a tennis player. <laughs> no, one of those crazy Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> Wasn't oh, he? Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, Night Night Stalker. Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler. <laughs> you were you were describing Nightcrawler this whole time. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna take your picture and I'm gonna kill my friend. <laughs> what did you think I was talking about? You did describe single Nightcrawler. white single white female. <laughs> I thought there was a movie called Paparazzi, like a real movie called Paparazzi. Oh yeah, wasn't there? With Cole Hauser. With Cole Hauser. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Here's the deal. <laughs> Would you rather get slapped in the face by Cole Hauser <laughs> or have the SpaghettiOs guy give you a hug naked? <laughs> slapped in the face by Cole Hauser. There you go. I love Cole Hauser. Yeah. I would Enough to him. let him slap you in the face. It's going to end up on YouTube. Because I feel like it might lead to something else. On one of those... Um, <laughs> You know, I'm so tired. I don't even give a Sorry. shit that you said that. I don't give a fuck. 
She's all yours, Cole. Go ahead. You want to deal with this f- fucking thing? Or have the naked guy from Seven give me a give hug. Me a hug. <laughs> these are good. No, because if you actually, actually chose the hug, then I was going to add while he softly wept into the nape of your neck. <laughs> All right, I have to ask you one now. Oh, Jesus. Okay, would you rather uh, take an etiquette class with Martha Stewart? Martha Stewart. I'm just trying to think of things oh, that I'd you fucking, I, I'd hang with her in a second. Or uh, <clears throat> would you rather... Hey, Martha, what was it like when you went to jail? <laughs> <laughs> or would you rather uh, do a dance recital with Ellen DeGeneres? <laughs> Oh my God! No, no fucking. There's no. There's not even a. a you wouldn't want to do a dance recital with Ellen. You'd no. rather sit through an etiquette class no. with Martha Stewart. No, I. I, can't, I might go I with Martha can't, Stewart too. I, I can't watch Ellen like dance her. with her crowd. Yeah. I can't watch her do with that Why? because because I know she's a fucking stand up comic. Yeah, and maybe she did it a couple <laughs> times because she thought it was fun, and now they expect her to do it. Right? So now, now she has to do it, and now, now she's she... get people coming up to her in restaurants like, "I love to dance too, oh, yeah. Ellen." Oh yeah, <laughs> she probably hates it. <laughs> yeah, and probably thinks about murder suicide every fucking time it happens. I see it in her eyes. I when I watch that, a part of me dies. Part of my soul fucking <laughs> dies when I every time I watch her fucking do that. It's just like, it's your show. You don't have to do that. Would you rather be grilled about your comedy by Oprah Winfrey or... The, or. 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 <laughs> or just guest host on The View. What's the... Oh, The View is the... Uh, yes. Oh, I could have fun With Whoopi view. and I think it's Rosie Perez is on there oh, now. I would have so much fun in The View. I would just co- keep bringing up feminist things and just say, <laughs> I don't understand what the problem is. <laughs> just to see how mad I could make Joey Behar. She's not on there anymore. Or is she? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I, don't I would just I would just act like a fucking idiot. And be like, no, I'm just asking. You would know? you rather go on the road with Guy Fieri... Eating all the food and just doing all that with him. Getting sunburned in that fucking <laughs> Getting car. Getting sunburned. Yeah. Or uh, would you... <laughs> I'm already out. Because I wouldn't want to get in the car with him afterwards and hear what he says about all this. Jesus Christ, that fucking sucked, man. Hey, be careful what you wish for. I thought this was going to be fucking fun. I mean, I know I'm making money and everything, but I, if I eat one more fucking sloppy <laughs> joke, I swear to God. Or would you rather dress up like Mario Batali? And like, you know, go to book signings with him as like a little comedic uh, relief. Hey, is my uh, mini me. Ma- yeah, you're, be his mini me. Ooh, because that's tied into me as a comedian. I have to get sunburned with Guy Fieri. <laughs> I just fuck with him the whole time. Just subtly. Guy, I mean, I'm not wanting to talk about hair or anything, but you know. <laughs> At the very least, can you stop wearing your sunglasses on the back of your head? <laughs> I know that was cool. Why does he do that? What because is the point he's of that? part of that generation that mm-hmm. got the barbed wire tattoo on your arm. Doesn't he look like he That's was in that band? Stamp. What's that one? Um, hey, now you're a rock star. Get your game, game on. on. Go play or whatever. All it is. that. Clear. What is the name of that group? Smash Mouth. Smash Mouth. Wing, 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 he looks like he should be in Smash Mouth, or are they the same ones that sang, Might as well be walking on the sun. Yeah. Or like Hoobastank or something like that. No. Hoobastank. Hoobastank is not the same. They Why does this not I, Didn't fit? they sing The Reason? I think I like that song. I don't know, Nia. I have no idea. I don't know anything about that whole time during music. I yeah. was doing stand-up so much. I have no idea who Hoobastank <laughs> Three Mary Four, perfect person. Blink One Eighty Two. I know who they are. I like I think, them. I don't I know why everybody shits saying. on Travis Sparker as a fucking drummer. He's an incredible drummer. He's a fucking great drummer. And everybody's just What's the he's, problem? He's fucking lame. I don't. I don't know what it was. What it was was there was a lot of young kids that thought he was the greatest fucking drummer mm-hmm. because he was playing even a pop band. So they just knew who he was. Right. So then all of a sudden, because they thought he was the greatest. It's all of a sudden Travis Barker said he was better than John Bonham, which he never did. So hey, how about he we met the trashed. drummer from Nine Inch Nails? Sorry to interrupt. Oh yeah, yes. How we about did. we met the drummer from Nine Inch Nails and his lovely girlfriend, Cara D. English, 
who I got hey, to meet. Hey, you name dropping all over the fucking place. Who, if place. you watch Cycle 7 of America's Next Top Model, she won. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm girling, nerding out right now. But All right. You know what we're doing? We're going way that. over and we got an early fucking Oh, I know. We're going over. Tomorrow. All right. All right. Nia, would you rather? <laughs> all right. I got to come up with a good one here. Would you rather? End on a good one. Uh, fly in a plane around the world. It's a fucking one of those old propeller ones where you sit in the back with the single seat right next to the bathroom and it already smells before it takes off. Ooh, okay. Would you rather do that mm-hmm. or, uh, oh, Jesus, how do I top that one? Would you rather do that or, uh, oh, I got nothing. It's too fucking late. Ah, oh, Jesus, Bill, don't fucking close like this. <laughs> Now I'm just thinking of doing something on a train. Fly around, so fly around the world in like the worst seat on the airplane. Yeah, on you're an not old ass airplane. You're just, it's going to take you like fucking four days to do it. Okay. Either do that or, uh, or... Lay, in a, lay in a nice comfy bed and watch American Greed. Lay in a nice comfy bed right, and watch American Greed. Let's fucking do that. All let's right, do it. go fuck yourselves. I'll talk to you next.